There are two trials for two incredibly horrific people going on. Or at least they wrapped up last week, okay? So I thought that I put a nice bow on it. Actually, sorry, I got to scratch that for a second. One I was just hoping would wrap up this week, but unfortunately for everyone involved, it hasn't because he's just, he's a special breed. We'll get to him in a moment. But this one right here, I think that this may be a little bit of a miscarriage or a miscarriage of justice. Okay. But if we're keeping it a buck, not all hope is completely lost at this point, but I can understand why the jury came to this conclusion. But I also know that if you weren't ultimately willing to make that final determination, you shouldn't have been on the jury to begin with. So who we have here, Nicholas Cruz, okay? He was the guy who shot up, what was it, Parkland School, okay? Killing 17 people. Like, this dude acted in cold-blooded murder, okay? Everybody agreed with that, okay? The jury questionnaire, there was a whole bunch of different questions for the 17 different people that he shot and killed. And here's the thing. There is absolutely no questions as to who did this, okay? It's all been determined. Everybody knows that it's him. He, that is way beyond a reasonable doubt. He was the guy who pulled the trigger. He acted alone. And I've made my stance on this type of stuff incredibly clear. But for all of you in the back that's there, I wouldn't even bother wasting a cot for this dude. But apparently the people that were on the jury, at least one of them thought that the evidence that was presented in front of them, the mitigating evidence, overweighed that of the aggravating factors involved of him committing these 17 murders. So, he will just end up spending his life in jail without the possibility of parole. Because this trial right here, like, it was already determined. He was going to be going away for a long time. This trial, specifically in Florida, was all about whether or not Nicholas Cruz was going to end up catching the death penalty. I believe he should have. I believe there's still a possibility for him as well because the prosecution, after all of the charges were read out and that it was determined that the jury was, you know, thinking that, yeah, that dude's guilty and all that stuff and he should go away for a very long time. We just don't want to kill him, okay? I don't know what their justification is. Obviously, the jurors can go out there and give their interviews and they probably will lay out their rationale and I'd imagine it probably goes along the lines of, yeah, we know he did something terrible and yeah, we know that there is absolutely no possibility that anybody else did this. We know that he acted of sound mind when he carried all of this stuff out. We just couldn't, we just couldn't meet this, okay? An eye for an eye leaves the whole world blind. I'd imagine that there was one bitch sitting there on the jury just thinking, no, Oh, we can't meet violence with violence. I reserve the right to be 1000% correct whenever we get a jury interview when this is all said and done. But like I was saying before, before I interrupted myself with my own tangent, I do that from time to time. That's why you guys continue to come back. Anyways, to elaborate on that, after all of the charges ended up getting read out, uh, the plaintiffs or not the plaintiff, sorry, uh, I was too busy watching the other trial. The prosecution also uh, put forward a motion because the sentencing is to confirm everything is supposed to be November 1st. Okay, so this is still going to be a couple of days out, a couple of weeks out at this point. They filed a motion, okay, to reconsider the death penalty. They got a lot of evidence, okay, to reconsider that and ultimately put the fate and have the judge in this decision ultimately make the right call. But, you know, the judge is who the judge is in this situation. I didn't watch much of this trial, and I don't really know her temperament or anything when it comes to what her opinions of the trial are specifically. And obviously, we're going to get a little bit more of an elaboration on sentencing day, November 1st. So she could grant that. Obviously, all of this stuff is going to be appealed in one point or another. So she has a long time to think about this. Let's get into the specifics. A jury in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, reached a decision in the trial. Oh, excuse me, trial of Parkland mass shooter Nicholas Cruz a Thursday, recommending a life sentence without the possibility of parole for the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School attacker. The jury was required to be unanimous for the death penalty recommendation, and at least one juror withheld support for the death penalty in the 17 verdicts of the first degree murder. And the first, uh, yeah, no, they're all first degree murder. Sorry, I was reading ahead as well. ABC News reported that Cruz pleaded guilty last year to 17 counts of first degree murder and 17 counts of attempted first degree murder. Circuit Judge Elizabeth Shearer 
read the verdict dealing with each victim, each of which cited mitigating circumstances. And we don't know what those are, what whatever was just being a bugaboo in one, two, three, four, five, six, all of the jurors, maybe potentially all of them, but at least one, at least one just couldn't sign this ass murdering hunk of shit's death warrant. I don't see any reason to keep this kid alive. I do not understand it. He's going to be in jail, at least, okay? Here's the thing, okay? He gets the death penalty, or he spends the rest of his miserable fucking life in jail. Congratulations. What's going to be a bigger burden, okay? Do you really think that, oh yeah, he's going to have a long time to just contemplate his life? Okay, that's for all of the people, for the other trial that we'll get to in a moment, who think, oh, he's going to face justice in there. Oh, he's a school shooter. These motherfuckers immediately adapt to their circumstances, and he has nothing to fucking lose in jail, so this guy's going to be crazy for once. He, or for one, okay? He knows that those concrete walls are going to be his home for the rest of his fucking life and you think that that whole jail yard justice ends up getting doled out to the most heinous people that are out there stop it these people just fucking maneuver in society for as long as they can and very rarely does anybody fucking die in the pen for christ's sakes for every jeffrey dahmer there's a charles manson and just think of the hundreds and thousands of other career criminals that are in there on a life stint with no possibility of parole that lived to a very, very long age, even though that they took the lives of 5, 6, 7, 10, 15, 17 people in this situation. This is one of those situations where I would definitely advocate for the death penalty. There is absolutely no question, absolutely no question who did this what his motives were, and the magnitude of this case right here, that would warrant the death penalty. That's my opinion on this stuff. If there is ever a doubt in any of these situations, put in the life of somebody's hands, ultimately in the hands of the state, I'm a little leery about. But this is one of those special cases, and that's where the death penalty should be reserved for. CNN noted, ugh, that Cruz's lawyer asked a judge to spare the life of Cruz, asking them not to make a decision based on emotion. Well, he killed 17 people. You could just take a look at all of the evidence that is there and just think, hmm, is this guy ever going to be rehabilitated? Is this guy ever going to be a tr contributing member of society? Or should we just, you know, stop the pain on the rest of the people in Florida to fund this fucker's life? Mm, I don't think so. Attorney uh, Melissa, with one S, weird, uh, McNeil, Cruz's lead attorney, asked jurors to sentence her client to life in prison, not the death penalty. And even for the people who think that, oh yeah, jail your justice is going to be it's going to be doled out. Oh, he's just uh, he's 20 years old at this point. Oh, he's going to be one of those pretty kids. He's going to be treated appropriately in jail. Okay, why would you set somebody, if you're thinking of that, why would you subject somebody to that sort of constant torment for the rest of their life without the possibility of parole? Isn't that a little bit more heinous than just ending their, su their suffering and ultimately the suffering of all the other families as well? I'm just wondering. I'm just wondering here. Judge Shear sent sentencing of Cruz uh, for November 1st, Tuesday at 9 a.m. Yes, and also that pending motion, which uh, I heard when I heard the sentencing going down at the same time. There is that motion out there to reconsider the death penalty thanks to the overwhelming amount of evidence that is there and the verdicts that the jury ultimately came to. So, yeah. That motion standing, it'll be a very interesting sentencing hearing on November 1st. And I laid out everything that I think when it comes to the death penalty right there. And I think that it should be attributed, even though this state doesn't afford it, to Daryl Brooks. Now, who's Daryl Brooks? Ah, oh, he was this poor prick who ended up getting abducted by a Ford Edge. A Ford Edge? A Ford SUV. A, for a red Ford SUV. And then that gosh darn autonomous SUV decided to plow through a Christmas parade. Not that long after Kyle Rittenhouse ended up getting acquitted just up the street in Kenosha. Daryl Brooks, who killed six people by running them over. One was a 10-year-old kid and then all the way up through a bunch of elderly people as well. He's also up on 77 other charges and he's representing himself and doing a fucking atrocious job in doing so. He's just tr he's pulling every trick out of the fucking book saying, I contracted COVID. Oh man, I, I, I'm real tired. And uh, I can't taste anything. 
So I, I, I don't feel it appropriate that I need to change into a suit at this point. I'm just, I'm just real tired, Yana. And then when that little scam in order to uh, prolong this trial going forward ended up ultimately failing and uh, it proved that, yeah, he didn't actually have COVID. Go fucking figure. You compound that with the fact that three days before trial started, he fired his public defender so he could go pro se on this one and then always drag up, well, I'm just a one man show here, Yana. I'm, I'm just representing myself. I don't know everything about the law, but then at the same time also trying these sovereign citizen arguments arguments where I do I do not recognize myself to be uh I do not recognize that name that you are calling me your honor I'm a third party intermediary representing the corporation that is the defender in this situation and I'm just wondering when am I going to get the opportunity to face the plaintiff in this situation is anybody that's going to answer to the name of the state of Wisconsin going to come to this courtroom because I have a right under the sixth amendment to face my accuser and if nobody shows up i think that all of these charges of all of those people that i ran over and fucking killed that day i think that i should walk on this stuff because i am a sovereign citizen but represent myself this motherfucker on thursday went on a 50 Five zero minute long rant laying out some of the most absurd nonsensical horseshit and then this fucking weakling of a judge just was like well excuse me sir i would really appreciate if you would just learn the rules of the evidence and make sure that you could come to a proper legal conclusion i've been more than patient with you and your objections that come through the court she is a uh, fucking weakling okay the way that you listen and the way that you deal with this motherfucker right here is you don't play into any of his fucking games you have to strike him down at every single nonsensical time wasting fucking argument cut off his cross-examination because this motherfucker likes to just circle on one topic one nonsensical one useless target I understand not wanting to get hung up on any sort of fucking appeals ground, but if any appellate court ends up taking this shit up, okay, they're just going to take a look at this and it's like, no, this was proper. Okay, he's not asking any questions. You were totally with 1000% within your bounds to cut off this cross-examination. In fact, you were within your, uh, your rights to cut off the cross-examination about 15 questions ago. This dude right here, there is absolutely no question. There's plenty of of evidence on the books that he was the one who was driving the vehicle okay he has even represented that it was him who was driving that vehicle he slipped up a couple of different times people have put him in that suv as well the video footage is out there there is no question that he did this the only thing that he's doing okay this multiple week long trial is just simply to get him the opportunity of parole in some point in time 77 fucking charges that he's up for he killed six people one kid a few old ladies and a couple of middle-aged folks as well okay if the prosecution ultimately wins okay if they end up getting what they are completely asking for he gets life without parole the exact same charge ultimately the nicholas cruz will more than likely end up getting a guy who ended up gunning down 17 people and a motherfucker who ran through a christmas parade a christmas parade one of the most wholesome things that a city can do he decided to terrorize that one fucking day after a long history of committing crimes as well okay that dude has a history nicholas cruz has no future daryl brooks and nicholas cruz should end up facing the same fucking fate in my opinion but let's get through some of this fucking nonsense okay because i set up my position on all this stuff so we'll give you at least a little bit of background all the way up until thursday don't know if i'm gonna watch anything on friday because it's just really fucking nonsensical they just continue okay the prosecution just continues to bring up people yeah uh, who in your family or did yourself did you end up getting clipped by this fucking monster did you see him in the vehicle okay thanks no further questions all right then i got a question uh did you notice if there was any tint in that suv uh have you seen the plaintiff in this situation grounds grounds would it be fair to say a oh, fucking human garbage human garbage 
Daryl Brooks Jr., the 40-year-old Milwaukee man accused of killing six people and mowing down dozens more at a Christmas parade in Waukesha, Wisconsin last year, raged in court and called into question the credibility of witnesses while cross-examining them on Thursday. He's done this Wednesday, Tuesday, Monday, Friday, Thursday. He's done this the entire fucking time. Are you sure that's the person? Uh, are you a third? Uh, uh, have you filed any claims in this trial so far? And all of this nonsensical shit, okay? He's trying to present a case where it's, you know, the, the laws of this jurisdiction need not apply to me. I'm just a humble traveler throughout the state of Wisconsin. It's a successful tactic for everybody who pushes that out there, like the, like the other cases that have won before, like um, get and fucked. Okay, it's never worked before. It's an unsuccessful strategy by people that know that they're fucked, know that they're just wasting as much time as possible. I'm sure he'll try something dramatic over the weekend before he calls one of his. He's he sent out thirteen subpoenas for people that are supposed to come in and testify on his behalf. One of those people is the state of Wisconsin. I didn't stutter. I didn't stammer. I did not misrepresent what he said. The 13th person to be subpoenaed in this case is the state of Wisconsin. He's going to try some fucking horseshit whenever he gets to present his case in chief, whatever in the blue hell that's ultimately going to be. And this stupid fucking judge is just going to allow this dog and pony show to continue because I just want to make sure that all the T's are crossed and the I's are dotted, okay? I'll be very patient with him. I don't want to be overturned, even though he's said on multiple occasions he's still going to fucking appeal all of this shit. So why the kid gloves at this point? Brooks, who is representing himself, has repeatedly interrupted the court. Uh, since the very beginning of the trial. Yeah, just launching retarded fucking objections. Ah, uh, hearsay. That's not hearsay. Ah, uh, lead the witness. Grounds, grounds, grounds. It's it's all fucking retarded. He doesn't even know what half of these fucking terms mean. I've watched or listened to a half dozen different trials over the past year and a half, okay? And I know more about objections than this motherfucker representing himself trying to win the possibility of parole sometime down the line. Because he's 40 years old, okay? The possibility of parole in 20, 25, 30 years at this point is something that would be likely if he had competent counsel. If he wasn't always trying to push the trial back further and further because that was the entire thing. First, he, I believe he first submitted a plea of insanity. That ultimately didn't end up working. Then he fired right before trial, three days before trial, right b uh, the, one of the final pretrial hearings, fires his counsel, decides to represent himself, thinking that would buy him some more time. I need to go through all the evidence. I just got discovery. I've only had all this stuff for three days. This happened last November. He's had everything in front of him since then. He's been in custody. He was caught... I think within like a couple of hours of this horrific massacre going on. So he's had all of this time to prepare. Okay. But no, I just, uh, my public defender, he wouldn't give me any of my stuff. I wasn't allowed to look through anything. Just fuck off. On multiple occasions, Judge Jennifer Dow, uh, Dorow, whatever. Bitch with a fucking blowout. I has ordered him out of the courtroom. Uh, not during trial so far. I've only seen that, uh, pre-trial stuff outside of the presence of the jury. During the proceedings Thursday, she allowed him to speak at length, but ultimately dismissed what uh, was uh, most what he said as irrelevant, according to a transcript provided by Fox Six. Yeah, that was that 50-minute-long tirade just before lunch. It was absolutely retarded. Brooks also repeatedly interrupted Doro, finally be oh yeah, finally beginning a 50-minute, 50 50-fucking-minute 50 50 rant and asserting that the court had a conflict of interest. Oh right, he also brought up this entire fucking treason nonsense. Uh, you are not fulfilling your oath. You didn't provide me a verified copy of your, uh, your oath of office. How am I supposed to know? You ain't biased in this situation. Nobody's provided me jurisdiction. It's like, fuck off. At the end of the day. This dude killed and ran over six people, injuring dozens more. Why are you putting up with any of this fucking nonsense? This dude should be shackled to his fucking chair, a gag in his mouth, and some poor college graduate sweating his fucking ass off in a cheap goddamn suit with fold marks in it for fuck's sakes. But yeah, just a just nice little summary here for everyone. Asserting the court had a conflict of interest and that he had not been able to face his accuser. Yes, the state of Wisconsin. 
the, the, the fucking prosecution, the district attorney's office, they're representatives of the state of Wisconsin. Okay, they are there representing the interests of the people of Wisconsin, the city of Waukesha, the county of Waukesha, the state of Wisconsin is being represented adequately. You just think that you have this kind of jail cell, jail house legal interpretation that you're just going to be able to say these magic words and you're just going to be allowed out of the courtroom scot fucking free to go and mow over a bunch of other people you fucking career criminal at one point uh, he told the court he moves uh, for this case to be dismissed on the grounds that he did not receive uh, certified copies of court documents and claimed there are many other victims that are not talked about what about the people that were horrified by my actions people got to see bones coming out of people's legs have we talked to them had what about the people what about the pox in the roads department who had to clean all the blood off of the main street what about them have we heard from them oh yeah and by the way yeah tested negative for covid still continues to wear a mask every fucking day in the courtroom because i guess people can't see his facial expressions that way because people want to attribute that this guy's a sociopath obviously you drive through a fucking parade there might be a little validity to that oh he has no emotions another one of these instances of oh yeah he's just gonna go in there and oh yeah he's just gonna face jailhouse justice this motherfucker's all tatted up he has a rap sheet as long as my fucking leg he's gonna go in there he's gonna maneuver he'll be fucking fine in jail okay none of these fantastical ideas oh man all of those career criminals man they really go into the pen and they face some sh- street justice in there even if it can't get carried out in the courtroom they'll just they'll have a real tough time they won't last in general population meanwhile you listen to people who have actually spent time in the fucking pen there are different gangs that are in there you fucking amalgamate into those places you end up backing up your dudes in there they end up backing you up and you don't drop anything and that whole um, jailhouse fairy tale oh, don't drop the soap the fucking floor doesn't ever get washed, okay? You, you're not picking up shit off that fucking stankin' floor. You wear the little prison uh, flip-flops for a fucking reason because it's gross as shit, okay? You want to hear some stories from people who actually spent time inside the jail knows how all of this shit works? Some of the most horrific conditions that are out there? Uh, what's, what's his YouTube channel? Uh... I watched the interview that he did on Fresh and Fit. I think it's end of sentence. His name is 1090 Jake. He tells all of these horrific stories. And he also just tells you, yeah, whenever somebody goes in there, you end up just finding your way in there. And then everybody, unless you just step out of line, okay, you do something indiscretion of somebody else, you, you, you're fine. You're, you, you live your life. That becomes your life in prison. There is no street justice that's out there, okay? There might be a motherfucker with a screw loose, Somebody who has nothing to lose because they're in there hmm, on a life sentence without the possibility of parole. So what else are you going to do? Throw them in solitary confinement? Great. You can only do that for so long because cruel and unusual punishment is kind of guaranteed to not be going on under the United States Constitution. Something that Daryl Brooks is arguing for and against at the same time. I'm a sovereign citizen, but then I get guaranteed all these rights. Like this motherfucker's confused seven ways from Sunday. Finally, Doro cut him off, and Waukesha District Attorney Sue Opper called Brooks' sovereign citizen arguments ridiculous. Yeah, because they never work, and they just waste time. And there's the judge right there. She, uh, she's definitely there. She's there, but being in control of her courtroom? Yeah, no, I don't think so. But those are some of the big criminal trials that are going on right now. I've been paying uh, closer attention to this one as opposed to the other one, but I know the particulars and I understand, hey, if I was in control of those courtrooms and I could dole out the justice, it would be pretty simple, okay? I'd just have them line up side by side, Nicholas Cruz, Daryl Brooks, one wall, one chamber, two rounds, that's it. But with all that said, thank you all very much for the gift of your time. I've been Don Consuelo. I want you to follow your gut and get after it. Take care, everyone.